Okay, good day everyone. Welcome to the session. In this session, we will cover process mapping, which is uh, more of an extension of uh, the previous session on where we learned value stream mapping. Now, this is these are the topics we will cover today. We will look at flow with uh, respect to sub processes. If you recall, that's where process mapping was applied. We look at the symbols for process mapping. We go into examples and discussions and uh, then we kind of show you what are the other process mapping tools that are available. A little bit of an introduction to an area of uh, usage of other tools. Now, if you recall this uh, slide from the previous session, we talked about how there is a macro and a micro perspective when we look at a process. So we looked at value stream mapping as being able to map the macro perspective where we are defining strategic directions and we talked about a, a lot of leadership involvement in this. Today, we are going to look at from micro perspective and look at process map as a tool to be able to map what is at the micro level. So, if we go into what is a process chart or a flow process or a process flow chart, we have uh, it's one of the older tools. It's a tool that was uh, developed by Frank and Lillian Gilbert. If you, if you remember when we talked about the history of management, they were one of the initial uh, contributors to scientific management. And the flow chart or the process chart was one of the tools they used to kind of being able to define how work flows from uh, people to people or station to station. But even though it was defined in the early 1900s, it is still very relevant. You can see that the Japanese code Okay, 8026-2021 defines what the symbols are for a process chart because people, it's still used to be able to understand the details of a process. The value it creates is you're able to document the process properly, you're able to visualize it, communicate the flow of the process at a micro level. And this is what, as we have learned before, once you're able to document and visualize it, people understand the bigger picture and we are able to bring about improvements in what needs to be done. Now, as I just mentioned earlier, there are several variations in usage. There are several types. You'll see several forms of process charts, some variations in symbology, some different approaches that are used. We will be only covering the basic approach in this session, the most basic approach to start as an introduction. But depending on the problem you face, depending on the requirements in your organization, these can be extended based on what is available, you know, in general out there. Now, this are, these are the basic symbols of a process chart. So you can see there is a symbol for operation, symbol for transport, a symbol for delay, inspection and storage. Okay, and you have see, you can see that the definitions of each are given next to, uh, next to it, which basically I think is very intuitive. I've only given these definitions so that you can have a formal definition, but obviously an operation means that something is being done to it or to change it. Transportation is movement from one place to another. A delay is occurring when there is a queuing or buffering or there is some, some delay between processes. That is where the delay is occurring. Inspection is when inspection takes place during, during after some kind of operation is done, inspection is done to make sure it is relevant and the quality or the specifications are met. Storage is when the object is actually stored. There is a requirement to store it and keep it for the next phase of a transportation that is storage. Now, what we are trying to do in a process map is to be able to use these symbols to be able to show what is happening in a sub process or in the details of a sub process. So, if we look at the way we develop a process map, it is very similar to the way we do a value stream map. We actually have to go into the details of the process or to the sub process, identify what's happening look at what the value added in the process steps are. We have to create a current state process map. Okay, we have to gather data on time and all of the details. We have to look at, you know, the opportunities for improvement, do the future state map, very similar to the value stream map. Okay, uh, we have to, through identifying bottlenecks, you know, look using the process map as a visual platform to brainstorm with the team. So this is something that people have time and time again said is very useful. The minute we develop a process map, the operators know that, look, these are the things we should not be repeating or should not be doing. There is immediate waste in this process. Okay, so being able to brainstorm is definitely one of the, 
one of the keys to be able to uh, visualize and collaborate on eliminating waste. Okay, we should be able to then create the transformation plan and implement the transformation plan. Now, when we compare a process maps plan to a value stream maps plan, a process map scope is much smaller. So, in general, it's easier to do the transformation for a process map. Now, from a timeline perspective, when we look, it is the timelines are generally shorter. You have one to two weeks prior to mapping, one to two con consecutive days to do the actual uh, current state mapping and then to execute again, it depends on <clears throat> on, on the organization and the way we need to be, to kind of transform our future plan to an implementation. Now, if when you look at process mapping, again, you can have a qualitative or a quantitative uh, output. In addition to using these operators, which has little, I mean, there is a qualitative element and there is also some elements on which we count and make it quantitative. You can have a much more metric based approach like we did for VSM like we and we discussed earlier. What we are going to do in this lecture is more focus on the qualitative aspect. The fact that when we say this is qualitative, the visual aspect of being able to characterize the, the processes in these terms are we are able to get a better understanding of what is happening. And once we get a better understanding of what is happening, then change or bringing about or identifying waste becomes easier. That is where we really find the value of a process map.